Crash by Jerry Spinelli, chapters 15 and 16. Chapter 15, pages 52 through 53. Chapter 15, I love the way my I look in my shoulder pads. I mean, I'm big to start with. And then I put those things on, and it's like I'm a wide bus. DeLuca caught me looking in the locker room mirror. Keep looking, man. You're still ugly. I ain't ugly. I'm scary. I'm scaring myself. I shrugged. My shoulders moved like small mountains. That's what I'm saying. You're so ugly, you're scary. You're going to score a touchdown every time you get the ball because nobody's going to want to touch you. At least I don't smell like you, I said. Other teams get a whiff of you, and they'll all faint and will win by forfeit. You're so ugly when you're born, the doctor smacked your face instead of your butt. Yeah, yeah. By now, we were walking across the parking lot to the football field. We had our helmets on. I shoved him. He shoved me. I punched him. He punched me. Yeah, yeah. We plowed into each other, colliding shoulder pads. We butted helmets like bighorn sheep. We grunted. We growled. We weren't really mad at each other. It was just a part of football. Football, see, is a violent and emotional game. The more charged up you are, the better you'll play. And it had been almost a year since we popped someone. We kept smashing pads and butting helmets. We were ready to kill each other. And then came along Schultz. We, rocked, we walked right in between Mike and me, pushing him apart from those hands and saying, Excuse me, girls. I was on him like cheese on pizza. We were on the ground. I threw some punches. But all I got were sore knuckles from bouncing off of his helmet. It was like fight, fighting a clam. Then the coaches pulled us apart. They were laughing. The line coach said, I'd hate to see the east, the hillside east having to face you terrors. Coach Lantner said, guess we better get started while someone's still alive. He blew his whistle. Football team, four laps. Go. Football season was officially started. I ran alongside Mike. As we dragged around the school, the cheerleaders were coming out. There were a ton of them. Nobody had been cut yet. Two of them were at the water fountain outside the gym door, Webb and Jane Forbes. She was helping him wash out his sneakers. Chapter 16, pages 54 through 57. Chapter 16, on the way home, we talked about it. I couldn't believe it, I said. Looks like she likes him, said Mike. I screech. Likes him? You crazy? No girl would like that oat burger. Mike grinned. You're just jealous because you like her. I laughed. Me? You're crazier than crazy. Why would I like that stuck-up bimbo? I laughed some more. As usual, we ordered pizza from my house. My mother told me from now on I had to ask Abby if she wanted pizza too. As usual, she was in the backyard. She wanted some. I ordered two mediums to cover the three of us, both with pepperoni. Then came Abby, took three slices, and started picking off the pepperonis. What are you doing, I said. She was stacking up the pepperonis like quarters on her plate. I'm a vegetarian. Since when? Mike sneered. Since she started hanging out with little Miss Webb. She looked at me all snooty. I do not devour anything that has a face. She even started to sound like him. Mike blubbered with his big, with his mouth full. She's getting weirder by the minute. I never saw a pepperoni with a face, I said. Why do you think there's little herds of them running around the ranch? No, said Mike. They're not ranch animals. They're wild. You go hunting for them in the woods. I jumped in, but only pepperoni during hunting season, right? Or else you're a pepperoni poacher. We cracked up. Mike made like a rifleman. You got to get him with the first shot. Got to get with the first shot, right? I howled because there's nothing more dangerous than a wounded bull pepperoni. Bang, went Mike. By now, we were rolling on the floor. Abby glared down at us. And after we shoot the wild pepperoni, I sputtered, we eat it. I reached up at my sister's plate, grabbed the stack of pepperoni slices, and shoved them into my mouth like this. Abby got up. You're disgusting. She took her plate outside. A couple of minutes later, we were eating our pizza in peace when Mike suddenly looks past me and says, What's that? What, I said. He pointed. I saw something move, like... Go behind the refrigerator. I looked. Probably a bug. I just hoped it wasn't a roach. We went back to eating, and 10 seconds later, Mike jumps up out of your seat. Yo! I whirled around, saw nothing. It ain't no bug, man, unless it's King Kong bug. All of a sudden, I wasn't hungry. I felt a little cold. 
Where did it go? I said. There. He's pointed to the corner of the kitchen. The wastebasket? Yeah, behind it, I think, or under it. I'll tell you one thing, man. What? My voice wasn't working right. It's fast. I pulled my feet out under the rung, the rung of my chair. Mike grabbed the broom. He stalked over toward the waste ba the wastebasket, holding the broom handle like a sword. What are you going to do, I said. Flush him out. You sure you want to do that? Yeah, we were whispering. He poked the basket. Nothing happened except me scrunching a little tighter. He poked again. Nothing. I think it's gone, I said. We went on poking, and then with the tip of the broom handle, he shoved the basket away, and out it came. He was right. It was fast, a gray blur across the kitchen floor. And then I was looking down at Abby, way down. Why was he so short? And she was looking straight at me, her eyes wide, panting, saying, What happened? Huh? What, what are you screaming about? Who's screaming? And what are you doing there? If mommy knew you were on the kitchen table, I looked at my feet. She was right. I was standing on the kitchen table. How could that be? I heard Mike's voice. A mouse. Abby clamped. Now where? Mouse my butt, I said. That was a rat. I lowered my, myself, myself to a seat to the edge of the table. My feet stayed off the floor. Mike said his fingers, Mike held his fingers a couple inches apart. It was a mouse. Abby sneered. My big, brave brother, Crash Guggen, is afraid of mice. I could have killed her. Not afraid, don't like, I just don't like them. There's a difference. Nobody was listening. Abby was all over Mike. So, come on, where'd it go? Mike nodged, nod, nodded toward the dining room. In there. Abby was through the doorway quicker than the rodent.